Is it possible to fall in love with a computer? Oh yes. Oh yes. It sure is. You know, everybody's talking about about how different I am. I guess they can notice the change. The way I walk. The way I talk. You turn my whole world around. Greg Rutke of Rutke Mods and welcome to episode 15 of my Power PC series. In this episode we'll be introducing you to my iBook G3 clamshells. These are the blueberry versions, not like the indigo version that I've showed earlier. And these are non-firewire models, the first generations. They're a lot more fragile than the second generation clamshell. And I'll be showing you the differences between these um, series and also explaining to you why I have three of these clamshells and essentially this one right here was cursed it was a pain in the rear end to get to work right um, but it's in the best shape and I ended up buying three of them and um, I ended up taking this one and getting it to work again and this one right here isn't going to stay stuck I'll be explaining to you why this one right here is becoming a G4 modded one. There's, I'm going to swap out the G3 that's in it for a G4. These are BGA um, soldered chips though. So I've been uh, in collaborations with DOS Dude 1. The DOS Dude 1 that created the Sierra and High Sierra patches. And I'll be sending this to DOS Dude 1, aka Colin Mister. Um, Meister. I, I, anyway, um, he's graciously decided that he wants to do this, and we'll be doing multiple videos um, together uh, doing this, hopefully. And um, it's going to be very interesting, and I'm looking forward to working with him. But since this system's working again, um, that's what we were to do with it. And this system right here, when I was trying to uh, fix it, this is the original board that was in this one right here. And uh, it's actually getting pretty darn heavy. But um, it's, it's a great system in appearance, but it had some problems. And um, I didn't know until after I got it that the USB port was actually broken off in it. And I soldered that back together. I'll be showing you pictures about it later when we talk more about these systems. 
but I also managed to crack the board. Uh, the tutorial I was following to take the system apart and get the board out missed one of the standoffs, and I didn't know about it. These boards have standoffs screwed straight to the case and standoffs screwed straight to the board. So I just didn't know, and uh, I ended up cracking the board, and uh, it wouldn't power up properly. So I ordered this system right here, and that system uh, at the time worked great, um, except the screen was busted, and so I had to replace, um, I tried to replace the screen in that to see if it worked, and uh, I could tell from the original screen and the small piece that still worked that the GPU worked in it. Well, rewiring everything, I ended up frying the GPU. So I had to order another one to fix this system, which was in this original case here. And this case is still in great shape, but it's not as nice as this one. So, um, yeah, we'll be uh, introducing you to them. This one now is an experiment system. I'm going to be um, modifying it to figure out how to set up a fan and cooling mod in this so the G4 that's going into it doesn't overheat. Of course, G4s run a lot hotter, and I don't want the system to melt or freeze or um, warp. And um, so we'll be showing you these systems right now, and um, let's get to it. Okay, so here are all my clamshells. Now, before we go over the differences between these systems, I'd like to show you uh, the problem with these systems. Now, the reason why I bought these systems here um, is because I wanted to have one that matched my blue and white. Um, the drawback of these systems here is they're made out of the same material as the blue and white. Um, and that's a problem because they're made out of polycarbonate. And as Steve Jobs said, it's built out of polycarbonate, which is the same stuff they use to make bulletproof vests out of. The problem is with polycarbonate, that plastic gets brittle with time. It gets much more brittle than the second generation's material, which I think was more of an acrylic-based uh, plastic. It, it's more durable for sure, and um, it's not prone to cracking. Now, I want to show you what happens when these start cracking. Um, they always tend to crack around the logo, like this, and you may get massive cracks. You'll get spider cracks, um, you'll get crazing, any kind of plastic crack you can get. Basically, it's like plexiglass. Uh, when it's been sitting in the sun too long, it will craze. And this is much similar to that, but it also cracks. And um, a tip, if you have a very nice first generation, or even a blue and white Mac um, tower, you want to uh, make sure these stay in a nice, darker, cool environment. Um, you can have them out, you can use them uh, even out in the sun, but you don't want them to be in direct sunlight too long because, like I said, this plastic gets brittle. And I'll show you. That's what it looks like. And um, it's it breaks like glass or plexiglass and um, it's not ah, I can't even get it back in now it's not a uh, very durable plastic with time and so anyway so this is the one I'm testing right now you can see the cooling system these don't come with fans like I said in the previous clamshell video and um, with that G4, it's going to run hotter. Now, the reason why I'm doing this in a first generation with no firewire is because these have compatible G3 um, power and stuff and pins and stuff that works with a G4. 
the uh, second generation has a different G3 in them. And so it's not compatible where these are. And um, I'm modifying this system with a MacBook heatsink, which um, is probably from a 2007 model. And I've bent it so it fits. And then right here is an iBook G4 fan. And uh, it's wired into the uh, ports here. This is a ADB port for testing stuff. And uh, it doesn't have wires in it by stock. I put some pins in it. And um, it's got the same power as this fan would run off of. So that's what I'm working on right now. I've cut a lot of the case. Um, internal case and stuff. I'm trying not to have to modify the case, but currently I can't get the case to clip on without it hitting the fan in some way or shape. Um, so I may have to uh, either get a more low-end um, profile fan or modify this one somehow. Um, I can't really make it go much lower in the case. So um, I'm trying to work out those bugs. Um, but still, that's the cooling system for now, and I'm going to show you some quick videos on how this works that I've already filmed. So considering that the ADB header here has 5 volt and ground, and this is a 5 volt fan, I thought, what the heck, let's give it a shot. I wired some pins into it, and have the fan just connected straight to the pins. And we'll see what happens when I hit the power button right here. It works. And I can even turn off the Mac and it will shut itself back off. And off. Okay, so here's the test board in the test case. And uh, we're just seeing how the modifications worked. And if the fan actually works. Now, of course, this is all being filmed before I actually make the video. So, um, yeah, anyway, let's uh, give it a test. We'll press the power button and... It looks like it just might work. Now the fan speed will eventually be regulated probably. Colin is talking about putting a resistor in and making it quieter. Um, it moves a lot of air right now. If I've gotten this heat sink on properly, um, you know, it should keep everything nice and cool. I had to reconfigure the fan layout a little bit here and move a few things around and make sure everything was still nice and secure. The fan's now pushing down the heat sink and um, I hope that works because the back of the fan was hitting the top of the case and now it's flush, it shouldn't hit anything. So let's see what happens. Well, I finally figured out how to make the fan work. Now, I wasn't wanting to modify the case like this um, but the inner shield was hitting the fan and honestly this looks pretty cool and very unassuming when the case is closed. And this is how I did it. Um, basically there's a slight bow in the case here. I had to put a, a shim in here about right here to lift the case up just a little bit. You can't really tell. The keyboard works great. And here's the fan powering up. Uh, right now I have the power button out because it keeps falling off. But um, that will be fixed in the final. So let's get it started. And as we can see, it's running. Really loud, but it's working. And when we shut it off, right here, It spins down, and there we go. So I think this works pretty nicely. Okay, so let's go into the differences of these systems here. Now, um, we're going to shut them down real quick.
But before we do that, I want to show you that they are running Tiger. And um, they can't run Tiger, usually. Like I've said in the past, all G3s can run Tiger. Any system with a G3 can run a Tiger, though it does involve hacking. And these systems right here had a Max Panther, which is, of course, 10.3, and it could run up to 10.3.9. We're running the top of Tiger 10.4.11. And this is literally an image of this right here. Um, there's multiple different ways you can run Tiger on this. Um, but I decided to run Tiger by making an image on a USB flash drive of this system. And what I did, and there's multiple different ways to make an image, but the quickest way was to use carbon copy cloner and connect it to firewire target disk mode into my Mac Pro here and then have the flash drive in the USB port there and um, just literally clone this drive onto that USB drive and then I took this system here and um, used a Panther install disk to boot into I opened up the disk utility in Panther and used that USB drive to restore the partition of that drive onto a partition on here and it booted right up. Now there's multiple different ways, but this to me seemed like the easiest, though it's a lot harder to, uh, well, slower to do it through USB. Um, and that's because this is a USB 1.1 and I was using a USB 2.0 uh, USB stick but of course it's still going to be running at 1.1 speeds that's 12 megabits a second that's slow and it took over an hour to restore uh, roughly I think it's like a uh, 6 or 7 gigabyte partition onto this drive but it worked and um, so I thought I'd quickly go over that and this system literally runs just like this system the uh, 66 uh, extra megahertz isn't super noticeable and um, the only drawback is this has the original resolution screen unlike this one that has the XGA screen uh, which of course I've modified and upgraded it of course these didn't originally come with them they came with these. And so we're running 800 by 600 on here. It makes it a little more challenging. And uh, I still don't quite like the um, look of 800 by 600. But I'm going to suffer with these because, you know, they're, they're still a great system. And I actually will probably be using the uh, Blueberry, especially the modified one, if I can get it to work properly when it comes back from uh, Colin. Um, so it's of course will also run a lot hotter but um, you know I'll be using the blueberries probably more than my indigo because it's an interesting system now um, and it's a very pretty system in fact I'd almost say this is more pretty than the indigo is and like I said before I love the indigo color but, I'll tell you what, the blueberry is very enticing. So, um, anyway, let's go into the differences between these systems. But before I do that, I'll um, have to um, go and um, turn them off. Also, uh, we'll be focusing mainly on this system. And so, before I shut all these off, one last thing is... I already have the system set up with Leopard, as we can see here. This is an image from one of my PowerBook G4s. Um, I did it exactly like I did with these two systems. And of course, I also did the Tiger system on here the same way. And it took a lot longer to get the Leopard on here. I'll tell you that much. But it's already to boot into it. And um, basically, when the G4 is in it, we'll automatically be able to test and see how Leopard's running on it. And of course, this system right here will be in another video, and um, it might be in multiple. But um, 
Anyway, let's get into the differences of these systems. I'll shut them off and we'll talk about them. Okay, so it's the next night of filming. I know that I was going to be comparing the computers in the next part, but this part I thought was pretty interesting and important. And this is basically the last time you'll see this system until it's finished. Um, last night I stopped filming uh, midway through filming. Not even midway, but anyway, I stopped filming because it hit me how I could make the fan in this work. As we can see here, here's the parts clamshell, and it's now literally a pile of parts. Um, and that's because this thing's finished. This thing's ready for the G4. And uh, I'll show you what uh, how it looks now. If we look around it, it's still very unassuming when it's closed. Everything still works. You can even pick it up by the handle. You know, it looks normal. But when you open it, it's transparent on the top. And that's because I had to push the case up a little bit. And it's got a bit of a bow here, as we can see. Uh, it's actually really hard to see it with the camera. But there's a bow here, and it makes the keyboard ergonomic. That's what we'll go with. It's ergonomic. Um, the keyboard's bowed up in the center, so your hands are kind of tilted a little bit. But you really can't tell um, from looking from a distance. And it still works. All the keyboard keys work. Everything works. And we can see the fan right here. It's all nice and pretty. And when we plug it in, we can see the fan kick on. Now, when Colin finishes setting up the system, this fan will have a resistor in it, making this run at a lower voltage to make it run quieter. Uh, it doesn't need a whole lot of air moving, just enough to keep the heat sink right here cool. Uh, I've also managed to um, put a piece of metal down here that pushes down on the heat sink uh, with the uh, EFI shield, EMI shield. Um, and that works great with all the screws in it, pushing down on it with the case together, it works good. And when we hit the power button, here comes the fan. Yes, it's loud, but as we can see here, it does work. We'll see it booting into uh, OS X. And this system now officially has uh, 576 megs of RAM. That's one 512 meg module. And the built-in 64 megs of RAM. And it also has the airport card for my um, PowerBook Titanium. And the RAM, coincidentally, is also from that PowerBook. Um, but it's still usable. It's still got the G card in it and 768 megs of RAM. And I'll eventually be re-upgrading it with the uh, built-in B card and um, go back to a whole 1 gig of RAM. But anyway, here's the system. It boots up. It's still running Tiger. Of course, the um, iBooks don't have batteries built into them, pram batteries. Um, the clock set by this battery which is dead and I just plugged it in. But as we can see everything's up and everything works. It's it's working quite well. Um, you know, it's got the airport um, and it, it just it works. You know, I can't say a whole lot more. Uh, you already know we have Leopard and it's got OS9 Tiger on it, and it's ready to be modified, and it looks really neat. Anyway, so let's shut off the system, and we can watch the fan shut down. <laughs> Sometime. OS X always takes so long to shut down. Anytime now. And it's still on. Wow. Ah, here it goes. Three, two, one, off. Still on. Come on. There we go. And it's spinning down. And that's how the system looks now. So yeah, this is literally the last time you'll see this until he's finished with it. 
and uh, I'm really excited to see how it's happening. But anyway, now let's compare these two systems, the two stock systems, the uh, Indigo and the Blueberry, and I'll show you a few interesting things about those, then show off my stock uh, Blueberry, and we'll finish up. Oh, I did forget to mention one other thing. It's got the backlight mod on this system. It do doesn't on the uh, official original stock system, but I decided to uh, mod it since this is going to be a highly modded system anyway. It looks cool. Looks really cool. Anyway, so let's get back to the comparison. Okay, so at this point it's been a few days since I started filming. Um, I'm sorry if anything's been um, out of order or doesn't make a whole lot of sense um, in post-production. It's just because a lot has changed since, um, you know, this has been finished. But uh, anyway, let's get to the case comparisons. And I thought I'd just quickly show you the differences now between that and that. And it's just basically the top part. And um, of course, this will be the last time you see this and uh, the next time you see it, it will have a G4 in it, thanks to Colin. And uh, as we can see, with the shield removed, just how neat it looks. But this system right here, I'm keeping 100% stock. So uh, let's put this one aside and compare the first generation to the second generation. So first off, we'll close them up and uh, compare the sides. Now on this side right here, we have the ports. As we can see here, the second generation had dial-up modem, and so did the first. And then uh, 10100 Ethernet on both, and then USB 1.1 on both. But if we notice here, the first generation was missing the FireWire port. Now, I'm going to show you a quick picture. These boards had the pinouts for FireWire. Apple had had it planned, but I guess they just hadn't perfected it completely. Or, uh, it just didn't work in po um, post-production. But, um, you know, they left a space in the case so they could um, do it in the second generation. And um, like I've said in the past, all these systems are compatible with each other. You can put a second generation in a first generation case, but then you have to either cut the case here or leave the FireWire port covered. Then right here, the first generation just has audio out, where the second generation has audio out and composite video out, so you could hook it up to a TV, uh, of course, with an adapter. But anyway, um, so this system can put out... Um, video, uh, this system cannot. So you can't use an external monitor on this system here. So if your monitor is messed up, the system's useless until you fix that. Anyway, so as we continue comparing the case, I want to bring up the next thing. Now this was introduced the same time as the blue and white was. And as we can tell, they look a whole lot similar. And this is actually the main reason why I wanted a blueberry to go with my blue and white, because this is essentially my second most favorite Mac tower ever made, uh, just because how interesting and unique it is. But anyway, this system was designed uh, at that time period. And then um, when they introduced the graphite systems, they... Um, uh, introduced a special edition um, which had the same CPU as in that, the 366, but it was a same translucent case and it was a graphite. Um, but that was it. It, was just, it came in graphite color. It was the same system except for the CPU. And this of course had two versions, the 366 and the 466. This here is a 300 just like the originals. And this system right here, uh, when it first was introduced with that, they came with um, 32 megabytes of built-in uh, RAM. And uh, the um, parts uh, clamshell has um, 32 megs, where the other two systems I have have 64, which was the second revision, which I believe came out when the special edition did. Um, 
and that just of course added it doubled the onboard memory which is uh, nice uh, but anyway so that's that um, when this was introduced it came out at around the same time as that system right there the um, gigabit ethernet um, and as we can see the plastic is vastly different this system right here uh, they, they made the, the plastic more durable than this this is more hollow sounding this is, has a louder thunk to it and as we can see here this system right here was more translucent than this system. This system's almost opaque, where this system's really close to transparent, um, which is no, really cool. Um, this system has a matte finish. Um, it's textured. This system has a smooth, glossy finish. And this system, uh, when it was introduced with that, it, it, I think it was just to more mimic the uh, professional lines. Um, than this, which I, I think was more like that, but still. So that's the outside appearance uh, differences, really. That and this piece right here, the battery compartment cover, uh, when they started trying to mimic the professional lines more, they went um, to this right here. The originals, though, had this. Each one had a corresponding neat little design here and the first generations had um, cute little things like my family and um, for instance I was assembled in like it's talking about itself which is cute um, where this it just says model number and assembled you know it's it's not quite as cool but anyway look at this design right here uh, keep this in your mind right here when I first saw this I thought this was a like marbled uh, neat little design but if you really look at it right here you'll um, just keep that in your mind and I'll show you why you should uh, remember this when we get uh, later into the video but anyway so let's open up the cases and We'll show you the last differences on the inside. Now, of course, the plastic on this one, like I said before, is more durable and it won't crack as easy. Um, and it's more opaque compared to this, which is basically transparent almost. Um, and you know, the uh, the logos crack. They did on these too. Uh, I've got a crack here. But it's really hard to see and they do crack but it's less likely um, which is nice but it, the biggest difference we can see on the thing here is the keyboard on the originals were translucent where the uh, second generation they were opaque which is another interesting feature but really that's all that's different about the systems and we can also see how transparent this is right here big difference but anyway that's the main differences on the outsides of these systems now I want to show you one more thing before I um, put this system away and just show you this and then wrap up the video so let's get these two hooked up and I'll show you here's one of those other filmed out of order videos here I forgot to mention about the logos on the tops now on the um, second generation the logo still fell off but I don't think it was quite as common the glue didn't seem to stick to this plastic as well as the glue did to these um, of course they'd still fall out as you can see here the leaf's still missing and uh, you will come across ones with the big logo missing but um, this was interesting. Both of these systems here came with the logos and the part system didn't. And um, this system, the one we're reviewing right now, the all original one, this logo fell out um, probably two days after I got it while I was rebuilding it. Um, and I, uh, I'm going to show you some pictures.
I had to glue that back in. Well, when this one came and um, I was finishing putting it back together, the leaf fell out. And here's some pictures. And uh, I'll tell you what, I understand why the leaves are always missing, because I almost didn't realize it fell out. I heard a thud, I looked down, I couldn't see anything, and then I noticed that there was something missing here, so I had to look for the leaf. I found the leaf and glued it back in. Um, I understand why these logos go missing, because you just will not know when they fall off. The big piece is a lot easier to recognize, that it's fallen off, but the leaves you won't notice until you get home if you're carrying this around with you. So, uh, you know, if you can get the logos loose uh, and glue them on with something better, the glue that's in these is a very awful glue. This is what it looks like without the logo, by the way. This glue here um, has the same consistency as a very dried out uh, rubber cement. Um, it feels like rubber cement. It kind of looks like rubber cement. I know it's not rubber cement. At least I figure it isn't. So, um, yeah, they, they used an awful, awful glue. And it just didn't bond. Uh, plus, they uh, put the logo on the backing of it's smooth plastic against basically smooth plastic. It's not going to stick very well. And, um, well, that's why they fall off. And um, I just glued them back in. If you rough up the back, as you saw in the pictures, the backs are painted white. And um, then you'd be able to see scratches and stuff. So you can't do a whole lot. Uh, but the white makes the 3D appearance of the logo. So, yeah. Anyway. So I thought I'd just get to that. Anyway, let's get continued on to the comparison uh, between those two when they're turned on. And then um, we'll go over to this. Now in episode 11, I mistakenly told you that the first generations didn't have boot menus. In fact, these systems were the first systems to have boot menus. Um, and um, the boot menu is pretty different, but works the same way as the second revision, which the basis of these systems ended up being. Uh, as we can see here, the graphics are pretty different. Um, the only Macs that, uh, New World ROM uh, Macs um, that didn't have boot menus were the blue and white and, um, of course, the uh, original iMacs before the slot loads came out. When the slot loads came out, they had the same menu, and then the second revision of those had the other menu. And we'll quickly show you the differences here. Um, you know, the icons are different. And uh, the refresh button and the uh, enter button here are kind of a light bluish gray color. Where if we compare it to this over here, this is what the uh, final versions looked like. And of course these were um, changed in the future to add extra features. But this is what they looked like. And this was on the second generation. And we can see it's black now. And the icons are different. This compared to that. I thought that was just an interesting thing to show you guys. Um, so anyway, let's put this system away. Also remember this has the XGA screen and um, that's why the screen looks like that right now. That's nothing wrong with it. But anyway, so let's put this system away and we'll finally play with this system and show you the uh, little neat features and stuff I have on it now. Okay, so here's the system. It's currently running Tiger. Like I've said earlier, these could only run up to um, Panther officially. And uh, they wouldn't install Tiger because uh, Apple included a um, must-have Firewire um, check before it would um, install. And if um, you didn't have Firewire, you couldn't install Tiger. These systems are perfectly capable. Um, so honestly, uh, I don't know why Apple did that. I guess it was to weed out the slower uh, models uh, because they do sometimes get a little bogged down with Tiger because it's more feature-rich. 
but uh, with enough RAM, honestly, you're not going to notice much, if any, difference. Um, so yeah, this is the system. Uh, to install Tiger, you have to uh, use there's multiple different ways. You can take the drive out of this, which of course is a big pain, but this one's been upgraded to a 40 gig anyway, so I had to, plus I had to rebuild it. But um, you can take the drive out of this, put it in a supported system, install Tiger. It will automatically be able to boot it natively. Or you can uh, do other things. Of course, there's no firewire, so you can't do target disk mode. But you can do what I did and image a drive from another system, put it on a flash drive, and this is slow, but it will work, and I found it easier. Uh, put it on a flash drive, boot it into an installer like Panther's installer, and use the disk utility to restore onto a partition on here, uh, just that complete image onto there, and bingo, you have Tiger. And um, just to show you, it is running Tiger. It says 300 megahertz power PCG3. So yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, if we go into like more info, we can look on the system's uh, extra features. And we can see here PowerBook 2,1. Now the um, next version, I believe, was the 2,2. So this is the original, and you can see 300 megahertz and um, all the stuff that's in it. Uh, the, um, the system name coincidentally is called Frankenberry now and I thought since it's a blueberry and it's made out of three different blueberries Frankenberry was fitting and it's, it's cute. I, I, I like the name but anyway as we can see here this is another way to tell this is the first generation it's got rage mobility with four megs of video RAM the uh, second version had a uh, revised mobility with um, 8 megs of video RAM, which I incorrectly said in the previous video, I said it had 2. But um, this has the original 800 by 600 uh, LCD. I really don't think it can run um, the XGA screens just because of the firmware, and I, I just don't think the GPU can handle it which is sad because I'd prefer to have the bigger and the G4 modded ones were be a little interesting to use at 800 by 600. But um, other than that, the system is literally more or less the same as the other when it comes to running and stuff. It is 66 megahertz slower, but it works fine and you can use 10.4 Fox and uh, even iTunes 9.1.1 just like on the other one. And we've got the PowerPC App Store and all that stuff. We've got Classic, which we can start up here. And um, this system can multitask. It might be a little slow, but it does it, and it works well, other than the fact that you've got to get used to, well, it being as fast as a 90s computer was in the 90s. <laughs> And when you think about it, this is actually faster because you wouldn't have this much RAM in it. But um, anyway, everything's starting up. Um, it's quite interesting, um, all the stuff this can do. It's, it's just like the other one, essentially. And it can do everything uh, the other one could do. If you've seen that video, uh, we're not going to go into major details about what this can do. But um, I, I want to definitely show you that this is, can and is running Tiger. Um, we'll close out Classic. Actually, it's about to finish. And now. And now. Now. Let's just minimize it. Oh, there it goes. But anyway. So, yeah. It's got 10-4 Fox. It's got um, the iTunes. We'll show you the iTunes real quick so you can just see that it is running that. We'll close out 10.4 Fox. <laughs> and here's iTunes.
iTunes 9. And it's not actually, there it goes. It's scrolling really slow, but it works. It's just, it has a, I guess, a refresh problem with the menu. It's interesting. I've never noticed that. But yeah, that's um, that's iTunes 9. Um, we can even open up the iTunes store. And um, it will load up the iTunes store. So if you want to buy music, you still can. You know, this is still a fully functional um, system as long as you have... Um, just while listening to music or have an older device that you could sync it to. And uh, remember, it's USB 1.1, so it's going to be slow. But um, I think iTunes 9 supports up to iOS 4. Or, um, yeah, I think that's the highest it supports. So any device made, um, like the 3GS and back, um, iPod touches, all that stuff, as long as it's running that, or, um, you know, any anything that old, like for instance, my, let grab it here, modded iPod mini, which in fact goes pretty good with the uh, Blueberry, yeah, cool, uh, this has a uh, 128 gig flash in it, so uh, it's got my whole music library in it, you could sync this with that. So, that, that's neat too. And as we can see, it is slowly, slowly loading. Here we go. And there's the store. And that's basically iTunes. It works. Um, so finally, uh, let's uh, take this system and restart it. And we'll... Um, boot it into OS 9 so you can see how that works. Um, actually, before we do that, I want to show you one more thing. OS 9 has a, 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 the default wallpaper for this when you install OS 9 is interesting. And I want to show you it in Tiger because um, I have a different wallpaper on 9 right now. Um, and um, showing you this is, um, it, it just won't let you um, do it properly. So we'll open it up in Tiger and take a look at this image. This is the default image for this system. This is the wallpaper made for this system right here. When you install it, it automatically puts this wallpaper on it. And if you look, does that by any chance look familiar to you? If you said yes, you've noticed what um, the image was on the battery cover. As we can see here, it's the same image. And honestly, I'm not a huge fan of this image. A lot of people love this image. Um, I don't really like the um, quote unquote jellyfish look. But as we can see, it's the same image, which is cool. You know, it's a, a neat little touch there. And um, when I first installed OS 9, presto. And that's when I realized what that was. So that's a neat little thing. So anyway, like I said before, let's restart the system and we'll boot it into OS 9. Okay, so we're in that first revision boot menu. We'll go over to OS 9 and boot it on up. And this system runs OS 9 incredibly well, which of course is from a similar time period. This um, would have came with uh, OS 8.6, um, and um, yeah, um, 8.6 is a pain to find because you need the specific uh, disk installs for this system right here to get it to run. Um, I'm kind of considering putting 8.6 on here so I don't have to have all those patches for some of the stuff I use. Um, and just for more compatibility all overall. But uh, yeah, here's 9.2.2 loading up. And um, if we go around on here, we can see uh, about this computer. There you go. 
And we've got the airport not connected right now. I don't know why. Oh yeah, it is. It just doesn't look connected. Go figure. Um, but anyway, that's the specs right there. And um, we can go to the profiler and see a little more about the system. Serial number, um, the RAM, and all that stuff. And um, yeah, that's OS 9. We'll quickly show you we have internet. If I can get this to highlight, come on, highlight. There we go. And here's Google. Oh, and this is Thanksgiving, by the way, guys. <laughs> hey, even the Google um, animations play. That's cool. Um, so anyway, um, yeah, that's essentially the system. Um, that's my blueberries, basically. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I know it's uh, probably been all over the place. We'll see how I get it uh, edited. But um, yeah, that's my systems. Um, like, for instance, right now, um, this system's going to be modified by DOS Dude one a.k.a. Colin. And Colin's going to be um, doing videos on it. We'll put links together and, uh, you know, put this up and stuff. If you want to see DOS, DOS Dude's channel, if you haven't, you probably have if you're subscribed to me or even watch my videos. But if you haven't, I'd recommend clicking this link up here and um, tell them that Greg sent you. Um, he's got very interesting videos. He does um, Mac repairs, uh, flashes, um, sometimes he reviews some of his old Macs and um, like I said before he's the guy that created the Sierra um, and High Sierra patches for unsupported Macs and he was also I believe one of the OS X hackers um, at least he helped with them a few times so he's very known in the community and he's a very great very nice guy and uh, I look forward to working with him more in the future Anyway, so like I said before, these are my blueberries, and that's the end of the video. Um, anyway, thank you for watching, and this has been a Rutke Mods video. Hello, I'm Greg Rutke of Rutke Mods, and welcome to episode 15 of my Power PC series. I forgot to turn the videos back on. Oh well. <clears throat> oh, Lord White's attacking me again. Turn power Mac. <clears throat> okay. Wow, that's delayed. Hello, I'm Greg Rudke of Rudke Mods, and welcome to episode 15 of my Power PC series. In this episode, we'll be introducing you to my. Whoa! Fire's in the way. Here we go again. Darn batteries, I wish it worked. Make this easier. Hello, I'm Greg Rodke of Rodke Mods, and welcome to episode 15 of My Power C. Hello, I'm Greg Rodke. Hello, I'm Greg Rodke. Hello, Hello, I'm Greg Rodke of Rodke Mods, and welcome to. This laptop's getting heavy. <sighs> Hello, I'm Greg. <laughs> Hello, I'm Greg Rutke of Rutke Mods, and welcome. To <laughs> In this episode, we'll be introducing you to my blueberry. Uh, I ha! Uh, I forget the name. How do I forget the name? Yes, and explaining to you why I have three of them. <laughs> and
And um, if I was looking away from the screen, that's because I kind of can't figure out where I'm aiming myself in this camera shot. It's hard to hold these. But anyway, it's, um, it, you know, it's, it's a great system, and I just, I'm going to start again. Hello, I'm Greg Breck. Hello, I'm... What? What? Okay, get your charger. Sorry. Don't worry about it, but man, this thing's really getting heavy. You want to be in the video? Please? Jessica! Love you. Here we go again. Hello, I'm Greg Rutke of Rutke Mods, and welcome to episode 15 of my Power PC series. In this end of the. <laughs> It's just because, well, this one I'm holding right here was a pain in the, uh, 